Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, Lent begins on Wednesday of next week. Now, if you are already receiving the daily devotional videos, you do not need to register. Let me repeat, if you are already receiving them, you do not have to register again to receive them. But if you know people that you can help me share the gospel with that you think will benefit from this journey, send them to this address. There's a little video there and they'll be able to receive the videos directly. So many people have done that and I want to say thank you to you. Well, let's go on with our series that we're right in right now called Walking Deeper. I want to say thank you to everybody who's written to say how much they've got out of this series. This really comes out of my prayer and where I've been in my life about walking deeper, about seeing beyond the words that are just written on the page. Have you ever thought you can do something and it turns out, well, maybe not so good? Recently, as in yesterday, I, I, our team is traveling right now. I'm on the road right now because we're doing parish mission events throughout Lent and we're recording all of our daily devotionals on the road and all of our other content as we visit people and speak live in different places. And uh, so we've set up a bit of a base and well, Rosemary went home a week ago back to visit family. She'll return, but she's gone home. And so I've been living by myself and I needed to do some washing yesterday. So I thought, well, I'll go and do some washing. And I got the sheets and I put them in a front loading washing machine and I closed the door and I put it on. And when it came back after the cycle had finished and I took them out and they were dirty. And I took them out and I looked inside the washing machine and whoever had been in the place previous to us hadn't cleaned it because the, the big rubber seal at the front of the front loading washing machine was very dirty and parts of it were coming off onto the, it was horrible. And so I thought to myself, what am I gonna to do to clean this? And uh, so I went to YouTube and Google and I watched lots of YouTube videos and I Googled it. And there was a couple of ways it suggested how to clean it because I don't know these things. One was you could just wipe it out with certain cloths and different chemicals you could use. The other was if you really wanted to do it well, you could take the, wash the washing machine apart. What do you reckon I decided to do? That's right, I decided had knowing nothing about washing machines, let's take the washing machine apart. So I end up taking off this big rubber thing at the front of it, I soak it, get it off, it was quite easy actually, uh, get it off, put it in a bucket of bleach and cleaned it for about six or so hours, then afterwards I scrubbed it and it's beautifully and beautiful and clean, which it wasn't before. And then you know what I came to do, it came time to put it back on and, in, and put the, dish, uh, the washing machine back together. Guess what? I couldn't do it. I, right now at where I'm staying at home, I have a washing machine that is in pieces. Now, Rosemary's not here right now because if she was here, she would have said to me, Bruce, do you think you, you should be pulling it apart? And she would have given me reason to, to pause because you see, she knows me. And whilst I'm good at some things, there are some other things I'm not. But but it did look, it did look good, easy on YouTube and, and reading about it on Google. And well, so anyway, I've, I've rung up a company that are gonna send out someone to put it back together. And when I spoke to the woman, I said to her, listen, I pulled the washing machine apart and she just on the phone without saying anything. Oh, did you really? And, and her really not saying anything said everything. You ever think you can do something and, and you can't? Well, there's a good example of it in the Bible. And what is Jesus's response to us? And it's this. Have a look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verse 31. Now stop laughing at me and just, just, just let's, let's read this, all right? Um, then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it's written, I'll strike the shepherd and the shepherd of the flock will be scattered. This is, Jesus is about to be betrayed. And he says to them all, you're going to scatter when this happens. But after, but after I'm raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, though all become deserters, because of you, I will never desert you. And Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you this very night before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. What's Peter say? Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. Even though I must die, uh, die with you, I will not deny you. Hmm. 
And so said all the disciples. Well, if we jump over into verse 69, it says, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. This is after Jesus has been betrayed. And a servant girl came to him and said, You, Peter, also were with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man, that is Peter, was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. And then Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. And at that moment, the cock crowed. And then Peter remembered what Jesus had said before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. This is a fantastic passage of scripture. Now go deeper. What's this saying to us more than anything else? Is that Jesus knew Peter. Jesus knew who he was. And even though Peter was saying, I can do it. No problem. I will die with you. What did he say? Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And Jesus is saying, yes, you will. Yeah, you will, Pete. You will deny me. And the reason that I know this is because I know you. I know you. And sure enough, that's exactly what Peter does. If Rosemary had been here, she would have said to me, Bruce, do you really think you should pull apart the washing washing machine? And it would have given me pause, and that's for sure. I don't know, I might have still had a go at it, but it would have given me pause. What what is this saying? It's when, 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 when I sin, when I fall short, when I don't do the things that I, I, I so want to do, when I'm not the person that I want to be, want to know something? Jesus already knows. He's never shocked by my failure. He's never shocked by my decisions. He's never shocked by your failure. He's never shocked by your decisions. He's not shocked by who you are. He's not shocked by who you've become. He's not shocked by your success. He's not shocked by your failure. He's not shocked by your denial. He's not shocked by your sin. He knows you. He knows you. And so right now today, in this day, as we are preparing for Lent, which is coming. It gives you great confidence that we don't need to feel defeated. We don't have to feel embarrassed. We don't have to feel a failure. We just got to come before God and we need to say what the saints have said, what we read in the scriptures. Oh Lord, you know me through and through. You know me through and through. In Psalm 139, uh, it's a beautiful psalm. And Psalm 139 really is all about the fact that we, we, are, know, we are known by God. And, it's, and it says this, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my thoughts. Before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in before, behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? I want to say to you today, wherever you are, that Jesus, God, knows you. And no matter where you are, there's no need to be embarrassed. There's no need to be worried. He knows you. All along, God knew that I wouldn't be able to get that washing machine back together again. He knew. Today, what you can do is it gives you confidence to feel at peace. And so when you're failing, come to God and say, God, you know me. When you're successful, come to God and say, you know me and God will be with you. Loving Father, we thank you today that you're with us. Allow us to experience your love, your goodness and your grace today. And Lord God, I want to pray for a gentleman by the name of Tim, who only a few moments ago I spoke to in Osprey in Florida. I pray that you know him exactly where he's at today. 
Lord God, I want to pray for all of us that you know us. Allow us to have a sense of peace, that you love us despite what we might think are our failures and shortcomings. Lord, despite the things that we think are successful in our strength, be with us today. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Now tomorrow, uh, the gentleman would come and he will put the washing machine back together again. I've got no more clean clothes, but oh well, I can get through a day. God bless you. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, no matter what you get up to, God is never far from you.